All right, kia ora everyone. Welcome to Space Sim Dev Blog One. So, you know, as you can probably, as you probably noticed, um, I've been gone for an extended period of time. There've been no tutorials, no anything. I made a community post sort of recently explaining the situation, but the very quick gist of it is uh, me and Seven Five both working together, of course, in the bakery. Um, have been doing a bunch of client work for a long time and also a little bit of work for competitions that didn't necessarily pan out too well, but we, we won't talk about that. But yeah, we've been doing loads of client work and it's kept us very busy and stressed. Um, but now we're going to put a, basically put a break on that and just solely focus on making space sim for probably, you know, <laughs> a very long time, you know, as long as it takes us to do it really. Um, so I mean, this dev blog is starting here because we've started proper, you know, development of it at this point. Uh, from coding and now just a little bit of 3D modeling. So we've decided to use Blockbench for making all our models because we want to go with a stylistic, sort of stylized, obviously, um, look for Space Sim rather than a sort of bland and sort of, you know, uninspired, uh, realistic tone. So we uh, it may look a little bit like, um, almost like a very, very modded Minecraft, but it, it won't really in the end because the planets are still going to be obviously all smooth and, you know, sort of shaped like interesting planets would be. So uh, yeah, this dev blog will, um, you know, follow through the week, and at the end of this week it will obviously be coming out, so this is being filmed seven days before, you know, you're watching it if you're watching it on the day it came out. So, I mean, <laughs> right now all I've got is this little model that I've just made for the hologram, and uh, throughout the week you will, I'll, I'll keep this video posted, and add new bits and bobs, and yeah, I've blabbed on for long enough, so that's the end of this clip, <laughs> on to the next one. Alright lads, so now I've just gone through Blockbench and modeled my first uh, vehicle. So this is just going to be like one of those little like sort of, I guess in Destiny 2, some of you might know, you can hop on a hover bike and go around. So that's, so we sort of plan to have some sort of, you know, ground based vehicles like that. The inspiration from this was a penny farthing, as you might be able to tell. And I decided, you know, to challenge myself in terms of design, to do something, to make a vehicle that I don't just model or something I saw online and instead, you know, actually try, you know, do something original, I suppose. So yeah, this was my first, you know, sort of time trying to do, you know, a little bit of shading. Um, I mean, the thrusters sort of leave something to be desired. We hope to do some stuff with scripting to get particle effects, but um, this looks good for now, I think. And um, yeah, I think it's it's really cool, especially for you know first attempt at a vehicle. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And uh, yeah, I'll quickly show you what it looks like in Blockbench. All right, so here we are in Blockbench. This is what I've used to model this. So you can see this is actually, you know, <laughs> similar to the Crunker editor, built out of a bunch of cubes. And you can see the unwrapped texture on the left here, which I've actually is not really properly optimized, but uh, you know, it's 64 by 64. It's pretty optimized. So uh, yeah, this is what it looks like here. You know, these are all different things using you know uh, transparent textures and stuff. And I've grouped them actually into different areas so I can animate it. So if we go through to the animation section, you can see I've got the idle animate. Sorry, the move animation here, which is when you're going forwards. And, and Seven Fires the setup right now. Uh, with some scripting so that when you, you know, you can actually move around as it and stuff and, and with classes so that it works. But we can see this here. So this is what it's like when you're moving forwards and then when you're just idle, it looks like this. And that's sort of what we see in game. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next clip, I suppose. All right. I mean, welcome to clip three of this here dev blog. So told me about Mixamo and I was like, it'll never work. And obviously it's not perfect. This model, this robot has been very scuffed, but I am blown away by how good Mixamo is. If you don't know what Mixamo is, like I did, it's basically this thing made by Adobe, and you can upload your 3D model. It will, it'll unwrap it. It'll, it'll rig it. It'll do all this, all this jazz automatically, and then you can basically use any of these different like animations. Like we've got Zombie Idol here. Like he's just standing. He's just chilling. But like, look at this one. Unarmed walk forwards. This is a robot on a mission. Like, in some ways, this is very scuffed. Like, what I should do is I can combine some of these bits, because it's using bits it shouldn't be using um, for stuff. But this is just, frankly, awesome. I'm really, really chuffed. <laughs> you do be walking, though. <gasps> What's the dog doing? <laughs> all right, halfway through doing the initial texture of this model. It's looking all right so far. You can sort of see I've got all the main bits in. And then I'm just going to obviously go through and... Uh, you know, get, add them to everything, which I'm sort of in the process of doing right now. But, um, yeah, looking pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, after I've, uh, right now, for now, we're just going to have this as the model, just this quite flat looking, you know, sort of type B. But later on, what we're going to do is make it more detailed. So we'll add, uh, 
you know, lots more bits poking out and bits and bobs. And this is just one of the player models that there'll be. There's going to be multiple factions. And for each faction, we're sort of thinking about having, you know, three different sort of, you know, uh, sort of people-y, you know, yeah, people, I guess, to choose between robots in this case. Might be aliens for one faction. You never know. All right, that's it for this clip. Okay, and he is done. Uh, for now, at least. I mean, I finished texturing him initially, but me and aren't, like, we're pretty happy with him, but, you know, later on we'll probably go through and add more details and stuff to just make him, you know, I mean, he's a player model, so, you know, we, we got to make them, them high quality, so we'll go through and add more details and stuff to this guy. But for the time being, he's a great little, you know, test bench for everything, so that we have something nice and, and presentable while we're working on animations and all these things, and you know, getting it set up so that it's in a, in a good state. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with how he turned out though. I really like the design. Took some inspiration from Chappie. I mean, I kept it pretty simple, obviously, for now. Um, but I think it turned out pretty great, and he's, uh, he's cool. Alrighty then, let's see. Let's see the goodies. And... That is gangster ass. It looks really good with the shading. And, uh, wait, wait, look at me, look at me, look at me. We gotta count it in. Three, two, one. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so good. We should just make this the normal jump animation. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This turned out so good. I mean, <laughs> we probably should do an actual jump animation. Looks fine. You're like sort of moonwalking when you go backwards, but like. Well, yeah, that happens. As that's well. fine. Yeah. I um, mean, we'll hopefully be getting new animation tools, so. Yeah, that's dumb. That's like really good. Yeah, like if you're just like idle. walking around and stuff, like. Is my idle working? Your idle, yeah. Like kick, kick my like this way for yeah, boy. <laughs> this looks sick. I just. Oh, it's so cool. The eye level's a bit screwed. But that's fine. It's really not that bad. Yeah. It's like this in most games. So. Yeah. Oh, I them running it. right at you is like <laughs> <laughs> they disappear. It's terrifying. That <laughs> is scary, bro. All right. Just finished sort of setting up this other planet here and importing it. Not entirely sure if we're actually going to use it, but I mean it's cool. And yeah, I mean it's canyony. <laughs> it's something. And uh, if I sound tired, it's because I am. But not as tired as saving fires right now. Yo, so I made a tree. It looks fine, <laughs> I guess. I mean, we're not super happy with it, but uh, we I'm pretty happy with it for the time being. You know, like it's good. I mean, I'll add probably more trees later on, and then there'll be less of these ones, so you won't be able to like notice how bad it is as much. But you know, I mean, it's it's pretty nice. And uh, so now we're just going to get that in game. So yeah. Alright, so I, uh, while Seven Fire has been slaving over the code of uh, rewriting uh, hoverbike spawning, I have been having a blast making this owl. So, he do be chillin' though, as the cool kids might say. But yeah, so my condolences for Seven Fire. Truly a tragic modern story. Alright, so Seven Phi has sold his soul, and uh, now we have settings. So we can increase the render distance to be massive for the owls. And I can turn on debug walls, which works. So as you can see, we can make our render distance tiny. And that'll mean owls, there won't be many owls, and they'll only spawn really close. So you can see the debug walls here. Yeah, so there's basically just two owls, and when they hit the wall, when they hit the end of the thingy they just spawn somewhere else so it's like you have more owls than you really do and as you can see when I move around so do the debug walls they're pretty snazzy and uh, yeah so if I obviously increase my render distance which is with G this is the settings we can set this up to something massive I'll set it up to 900 for the time being and this is obviously to save performance so um, we were testing and we found that <laughs> that when we had a uh, like uh, owl spawning in the entire map for this planet anyways it was like getting having quite an impact on our frames 
Hey, yo, we got a boosh over here. Damn, what the boosh doing, though? Alright, so I've been trying to set up grass for the uh, for the Earth planet, right? It's like, you know, we can have some nice grass, it'll be lovely, and then everyone will be happy. Carter hates the waffle that I've made here, and uh, I'm going to fix it. It's not going to be as waffly, and it's going to be a nice clump that isn't waffled. Um, but yeah, so then what we do is we do that, we import it to Blender. Um, oops, along with all these other bushes and stuff that I've been setting up. And then we can just set this to be viewable, and my computer's going to die. And there we go, so now it's in. And my computer has, of course, died. Um, but it's actually, like, pretty cool. And uh, it's grassy. Pretty colored grass. Well, I don't know why this happens. I'm, we're going to try to fix that. But, um, uh, yeah, the only issue with the current thing, sort of what Simfy was going on about, is when there are bits that are out on their own, and it's a waffle looks really bad. Although this is extremely laggy, so basically to get this to work and crunk it without um, no one being able to play the game because it will crash their PC, um, is we're going to have to separate it into chunks for the grass. So basically it will only render the grass in like a few chunks around you and as you move into another chunk it will change which ones it's rendering. So basically it will actually be possible to run is the idea um, because we'd like people to be able to play the game, surprisingly enough. Uh, also I'm going to change up the actual texture for the whole terrain because right now it's it's a bit too dirt looking and I want it to be grassy fields and dirt doesn't match that vibe so I'm going to fix that but um basically yeah that's the situation of the grass and uh, yeah as you can see it's actually but I also made this cute little bush and this other cute little bush that has blueberries on it you can see them a bit better if I go down here oh god this is laggy uh, but you can see the grass there on a weird angle because the tree, which is a bit ugs. And then this little fern I made that's around the place, this little blueberry bush, and just this boring little bush. So, um, yeah, we're just trying to basically spruce up the planets and have them actually be a little bit interesting and not as sucky. But that um, comes with a performance hit, so we're going to have to do a lot of super awesome and fun stuff to get around that. Okay, so... After decades of construction and uh, child labor, uh, we now have grass that doesn't look awful. And we got some bushes and stuff uh, in Blender. Now, the challenge is getting this into Crunker without it lagging, because even in Blender, as you saw in previous clips, it's crazy laggy. Um, and that sucks. Also, I updated, I did the thing I said in the previous clip, so uh, past me uh, would be very thankful of me right now. And now everywhere's grassy, basically, and there's a bit of shading. We have shading on the mountains now. If, yeah, yeah, so that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, so basically now the only reason we can't put this in Crunker is because it's crazy laggy and we need to make a chunk system. So, yeah. CMFI is just absolutely excited. Um because it's going to be really, really difficult. So that's really awesome. So uh, probably this is going to be, I mean, not the end, but like uh, most of next week's dev block is probably, probably going to just be chunk loading. So that's pretty sick. Hopefully we can get it to work. I'm not sure we won't be able to. Yeah, well, with enough time and beatings, anything can work. Um, yeah. So that's going to be fun. I'll probably continue to make models next week, of course, but, you know. Anyways, this video comes out uh, day after tomorrow for current us. So we're going to do some stuff that you're about to see. So on, on with that. I wonder what it is. Who knows? <laughs> All right, so I made another rock as well as another rock, which I'll show you in a second. But this rock ended up looking shit with this stuff because this is going to be on top of the mountains but yeah it ended up looking rubbish so in the actual thing I vetoed these but if we go to Blender you can see this lovely scene here we've got the new rocks um, so if I just go into this mode and I'm going to quickly turn the grass off because it's crazy laggy and you can see the other new rock I just made which I like the texture on this one a lot this one was was fun to do but um yeah, basically this I've just sent over to Seven Five because he's been slaving over making a, 
a trunk loading system that's very clever and we'll talk about a teensy bit in the next clip. See you then. What's up guys? So I know I said I was going to talk about chunk loading and that was going to happen but it's Friday night. This video is about to go out. Well, I have to get it out um, for you to watch. And I mean, if you've made it this far, I congratulate you. This is a really long video. Didn't want it to be this long. But if you guys enjoyed me talking a lot more and us going, you know, a little bit more in depth, you know, even though we, I blabber on a bit, I'll be able to chop down on that in the next video, especially now that you sort of get the gist of the project. But yeah, if you enjoyed, you know, a bit more uh, detail about stuff, let me know. If you didn't, if you want to be a bit more quick fire, just, you know, did this, did this, did this, did this, you know, um, I, we, I can totally do that. That's totally a thing I can do. But uh, yeah, basically the real quick gist of the chunk loading is we'll be splitting it up into initially right now. We're just going to go for a 7x7 thing. So uh, that's, uh, what, 49 uh, individual squares. And uh, we use a, a few uh, scripts that help us do that faster. You know, more mainly 7 by working on it. Um, I'd love to show some footage, but he's not on right now. And I don't have time to wait. So yeah, I guess you guys will see that at the beginning of next week's dev vlog. Um, it's looking really cool. Uh, we're also working on splitting up the texture, so this should also mean that it is actually faster to load into the map. Um, because we're actually, instead of just the um, foliage and grass and whatnot, it's actually going to be the whole, uh, all the planets are actually going to be uh, separated into chunks. So you can, yeah, sort of like Minecraft. Um, and that will work in, in Crunk, which is kind of crazy. So um, yeah, you've got that to see at the beginning of next week's dev vlog. Um, and if you're in the bakery, you'll probably see it a lot before. <laughs> so link to the bakery, uh, Discord in uh, the description of this video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's a very different one from a normal type of thing. So yeah, um, I hope it's not as long, uh, not as long next week. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, like, subscribe, all that normal jazz that um, people say on this here place. And yeah, see you later.